Interesting, but either way, ladies and gentlemen, diamonds in the bus in the building. Hell yeah! I said diamonds in the bust. Diamonds in the bust in the building. <laughs> Whoops. Christian, good sir, welcome back. We appreciate you joining. First, how are you? Pretty good. How about yourselves? I am doing excellent. I'm sure you're very familiar with Michaela, Michaela, Christian. I know you guys know each other, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Did you did you both ever play a show together back in the day? No, we're we were a little far from each other. I was a I'm about like four. I was four or five hours from you guys in in Buffalo. Okay. Oh yeah. Got you, yeah. Christian. Uh, for those that may not know you or your band, can you toss it all your social media links for me real quick? Sure. Uh, we got Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we got TikTok, YouTube. But it's, it's I know it's. Uh, Facebook's at Diamonds Dust One, but where? What exactly yeah. is the rest of them? Are they all the same as that, or Instagram is Diamonds underscore Two underscore Dust, and TikTok is Diamonds Dust Official. All right, well, let's dive right in. We got brand spanking new music just came out from you, man. We've been waiting for the for the juicy new album. It's <laughs> out. First, how did you come up with the title? Amidst the Hollowed and the Vanquished. How did you come up with the title for it? Um, I don't know. Barry came up with the title for it, and unfortunately, he couldn't make it today. But um, I will have to ask him and get back to you on that. So, so he he just he just shouted it out one day, maybe in practice, and you were like, "Bro, I love it. Let's just roll with that one." He didn't even give us an option. He was just like, "Yep, this is uh, Amidst the Hollow and the Vanquished." Okay. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, you gotta, and Barry says it, you gotta roll with it. That's that's how it is. Uh, of of all the songs on here, which one was the hardest one for you to record from a vocal perspective? Like maybe it just you just couldn't hit that high scream or that low needed to be just a little bit nastier. Uh, I think I struggled the most with um, What's Left of Nowhere. There's a particular like note in that one that's tough? So Barry did the vocal patterns and they were, um, for me, super strange because it was very different from, you know, uh, what he does and what I do is very different. So uh, it, it took quite a bit to uh, actually get that one song done, but everything else went pretty smooth. Hell yeah. And you got Vicky from The Agonist and uh, I forget the name of her other group that she's in, but uh, how did, how did the, that collab come about? Did you just reach out to her and she said, hell yeah, right away? Did she did she have yeah. to hear your music first, or she just was inter in, immediately interested? Uh, again, I don't know the specifics on it. I didn't talk to her directly myself, but um, yeah, from from what I'm aware, Barry said, uh, you know, she was game, and uh, yeah, here we are. Might even actually maybe do a video for that song in the future, and she oh, may make what? a fight. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Because she's in what? She's in Canada, I think. Maybe, maybe. That I don't know either. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe not. Before we dive into some tunes, Michaela, do you have a question for Christian? Yeah, like what were you guys listening to like as the inspiration for the newest record? Like how how did these tunes come about? Um, well, I can't speak for the guys, but for me, um, listen to a lot of Shadow of Intent to get vocal inspiration. Um, definitely White Chap. Um, more like modern day stuff would definitely be some Lorna Shore. I definitely take some inspiration for them for sure. Um, I want to hear, I want to hear the one with Vicky, if that's okay to start off with that one. What's left of nowhere. Absolutely. Let's dive right in. Uh, while we're listening guys, if you're feeling the music, please go on Spotify. Slap that mother right there. Hit that follow button. Support diamonds to dust. <laughs> So, so you, so Barry pretty much demos as as close to finish as possible, and then you guys take it all to Randy to clean up. Is that kind of how you guys do your recordings? Sometimes it's kind of a mixed bag. It really depends. Um, for this song in specific, specifically, uh, I believe used to actually be an old "What's Left of Nowhere" song, which was Barry and Melvin's uh, band years and years ago, right when Diamonds to Dust first started. Um, and I, I 
he kind of needed it to be, you know, exactly the way it was because, you know, the song was already released. So. Okay, I got you. I saw recently pop you popped your crowd crowd uh, surfing cherry, if you will. What was it like? Yeah, was what was it like crowd surfing for the first time? Uh, pretty nuts. Uh, I was in shock and started to forget the words to some of our songs because it was just like, wow. That is but, cool. Uh, yeah, it was amazing. That show was that show was great. Th Brooklyn, th Brooklyn. That's the same show where where you put the album, the the CDs for sale, and they're gone. They everyone bought them all. Yeah, we, we didn't. It was actually I think it was a day or two after that show. Yeah, and the CDs were gone within. Five hours. Which Th that's crazy. amazing. Yeah, Kudos. Awesome. Kudos to you, sir. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, did you bring some hot sauce? You know what? I forgot about it, but I got some upstairs. So um, give me two seconds. I can go grab it. I got you. I'm going to play. I'm going to play Ply to the Wicked, which is one of my absolute favorites. It just has those nasty <laughs> like crazy high screams that I love. Uh, go grab it and we'll jam some more of your tunes. All right, I got you. So you said you said not every time that's how the way it goes regarding Barry then Randy. Is there a song on here that Randy did not touch? No, Randy did uh Randy did everything. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Cool. So you got the hot sauce? Yes, sir. I got some uh Melinda's style ghost pepper wing sauce. This Oh sh some hot sauce. You got some legit hot sauce. Okay, okay. I'll bust out my hottest cuz you seem to have grabbed your hottest. Hell yeah. Um, you get to pick the trivia though. I think you've done this before. Uh -huh. You get to pick the trivia. Uh, what movie or TV show have you seen the most? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. Oh boy. Oh. I, my suggestion is to pick a movie because TV shows could have tons and tons of episodes. It could be a lot more complicated. It's your um, call. Oh, shoot. Uh, all right. How about... How about the very first Spider-Man, the one with Tobey Maguire? I know that movie pretty good. I've seen it a lot. You got it. Give me a second. Michaela, shoot off another question or two. Um, Let's see. What what bands did you first get into, like, to first get into the heavy stuff? Like, what got it going... Like, what was the first band that kicked it off into diving into the more heavy stuff for you? Say, I don't think. I don't think. Uh, specifically on Hero, I think it was two. PlayStation two. That was uh, that was shoot. I, I think it was seven. And ever since, it's just like I love getting heavier and heavier as time went on. That's awesome. Yeah. Is there a is there a particular artist or or somebody that you reached out to to for a feature just like you did with Vicky, but it maybe they said yes, but it just wasn't the right time, or like maybe you had somebody else in mind to jump on a, a second song? Um, we were thinking about getting Matt from uh, As Lion Lambs on a second song, but um, the way we kind of had it set up, and the way my like, I just wasn't really cutting it writing lyrics for this album. Um, so we are going to have him on the next single, which will be sometime early next year. So it's happening. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. In Spider-Man in 2002, Tobey Maguire in mm -hmm. the film, who is the actual first person that calls Toby Webhead? Who calls him Webhead first in the movie? What was your answer? <clears throat> um, dude, I, Green, Green Goblin? I have no idea. That would have been my guess. <laughs> Enjoy the hot sauce, my friend. <laughs> Enjoy the hot sauce. The answer is the wrestling ring owner. The guy that does the wrestling ring when he fights, I believe he fights, what does he fight? Uh, Macho Man, right? Yeah. In, in and yeah. that scene, he calls him <laughs> Webhead. Oh, yeah. So enjoy the hot sauce. Uh, what song on, on Amidst would you like us to play that we haven't jammed yet? Uh, how about Darkness in the Daylight? My, uh, my bass player almost 
asking me to play that one. You got it. I'm going to full screen here real quick, too, so we can see the, the sauce. Random, random fun questions. Uh, is there is there a food item that you just absolutely hate where someone's like, I'll give you a hundred bucks. hundred bucks is still not enough for you to eat this food item. Uh, I like broccoli, Rob. I'm not a fan of broccoli. <laughs> it is horrendous. Interesting. I was not <laughs> expecting that as uh, as your answer. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Uh, chat says nice Naruto Naruto cup, by the way. Uh, what, what's a, uh, let's see, what is, where's your dream vacation? If you could go anywhere in the world and spend a week here, all expenses paid, where would you go? Probably Japan. Dude, Japan is, is like my number two, but Japan, yeah. Japan would be amazing. Australia for me would be number one, but. Yeah, I'd probably, uh, Australia would probably be my number two. Yeah, it's, you're it like a really, beautiful... you, uh, you're, you're a father, correct? Yes. Does it ever get hard balancing the band and being a dad? Uh, yes and no. I guess um, you know, my family's really supportive, and the kids, you know, love it. Of course, it can be tough to get a uh, babysitter sometimes on shows and stuff. But we, you know, we don't really play that many shows for it to be a um, like a serious like hindrance, I guess, for family life and you know band life um but i i guess it could get a little tough sometimes it really kind of kind of depends on the situation but as it is right now not, not too bad have you been able to do an all-ages show where they're able to see daddy perform i had brought my oldest skylar once to a show and uh oh, so what, do you, what do you think she um oh, i'm sorry hmm I don't know. She was like, dude, I don't, I don't just kind of happy to be alive at that point. <laughs> she was like, heck yeah, that's my dad right there. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, do you have any, do you have any bad habits? Oh yeah. Smoking cigarettes, cigarettes, like my worst habit. Bummer. Yeah. It's all right. I used to smoke cigarettes too. Maybe hopefully eventually, uh, do you vape also or do you just hate vapes? Um, I've tried to vape. It gives me nasty panic attacks. Oh, weird. Um, Interesting. I don't know why. It it just for whatever reason it it affects my lungs in a way that make me feel like I'm dying, and then it's just all over from there. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, we don't want that. It's not, it's not good, but uh, uh, Michaela, do you, do you have another question or two? Um, favorite munchie snack. Mm, um, probably smart food, smart food popcorn for sure. The white cheddar popcorn. Oh yeah, I feed yeah. a bag of that to the face. Yeah, it's, it's, it's same. Heck yeah. Uh, I feel like I've asked you a bunch of. I'm trying to think of stuff I haven't asked you in the last interview. Um, that we, cause, what what is your what's your dream car? Dream car. Oh shoot. Ah, uh, you're you're a awesome. big car guy, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. I love cars. Um, geez, I guess right now, maybe uh, the new Mark V Toyota Supra, because they just came out with the six-speed manual version of it, and that car that that it's got a crazy BMW motor in it that just it rips. That thing is amazing. Man knows his it, stuff. Tuning sure. potential. It's a great car. So if if the band takes off. Uh, which we're praying it does, and and all of a sudden, just millions of dollars is at your feet, and you've paid, you know, you've you've helped out the family, you've got a lot left over. Are you are you buying a car like that and just souping it up hardcore with all the Fast and Furious goodies? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I think uh, tuning tuning's probably the most fun when it comes to uh, for me when it comes to car stuff. So yeah, a hundred percent. So you've kind of dabbled in that before. Yeah, I had a uh, BMW 335i. It was a twin turbo car. Uh, six speed manual convertible. And before somebody hit me, I was pushing probably around 414 horsepower. That's impressive. 415. That's not bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> tell me, tell me the worst show diamonds has ever played. Everything went wrong at this show. Oh, geez. The first show I ever played, um, ever was in, uh, Reading, Pennsylvania. 
and it was just me, uh, Barry and Melvin. And for whatever reason, I think uh, Barry was going to switch guitars and he, when he pulled out the jack, it kind of like messed up the entire guitar. And for, or I think he was actually, he was switching guitars and he was trying to put the jack in and he was fiddling with it. And the second guitar, the jack pulled out. So we couldn't play any of the rest of our set. So we only got through like three songs. Oh man, he couldn't, he couldn't just tune the other guitar real quick or it just has a completely different sound and it didn't match. I just, I, you know, I don't know the specifics on it. I would assume that it didn't match for some reason. Um, somebody actually offered us an H string. Barry was like, I can't play that. <laughs> <laughs> Chat once. Like, I'm sorry. I, I said, I guess it was in the same tune that we were playing in, but yeah, for whatever reason, it wasn't. Is uh, Naruto your favorite anime? Um, I would have to say Dragon Ball Z is probably my favorite anime. Um. For I'm not a huge anime guy, but uh, I feel like those are probably the two most popular ones, the most commonly known ones. I'd have to uh, have to agree with that. Yeah, yeah. What's uh, what's the band got planned next year? Obviously, you told us about the single with Matt, but uh, what's some stuff that you're allowed to tell us? I know a lot of times artists can't tell us every little juicy, juicy detail, but what are you allowed to tell us that's coming up? Uh, 2023. Uh, definitely be releasing singles, um, quite a few of them, as often as we can. Uh, we're going to try to pump out a whole bunch of music videos. Uh, we got some more merch on the way, possibly talking about maybe getting some vinyls or vinyls, however you say that, set up for the uh, album. <laughs> um, vinyls. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's that's pretty much the what we're going for this year. I mean, you know, other than push and, push and listen. Do you, you, know, we, do you use the same video director? Like, are you going to use the same director as Christy? Uh, probably, uh, Eric DiCarlo. Yeah. He's, he's a very, very, very good. Yeah. Cause that uh, video is solid. Yeah. Great, he great quality. Uh, his Chelsea grin video did was amazing. What he did for us was amazing. The hellfire was amazing. He's just, he's really is a master. Hell yeah. Maybe you can do like a bundle special and knock out like three in a weekend or something. Hopefully that would be a long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> worth it though. Definitely worth it. Uh, what's what's something in your career that's on your bucket list goal wise that you want to achieve next year? Next year, uh, I would like to do a legit tour, a legit tour um, where we're, you know, out there every day for a set amount of time just playing shows. California, please. California and Florida. We would love to make it out to California, you know. Way over there in the West. I've never been West myself, so it would definitely be a first experience. Wild, wild West. <laughs> Hell yeah, that would be awesome. Well, we'll do we'll do final questions, and then we'll let you go, so we appreciate your time. But, uh, Michaela, what's your final question for Christian? Um, favorite all-time album? Album. Oh, Somatic Defilement, for sure. Whitechapel. Nice. Without a doubt. 100%. So that's, on, that's on regular repeat rotation? Oh yeah, yeah. I'd say I probably yeah. You know, when I do listen to music, I'd probably can listen to the whole album on the way to work for sure. <laughs> I have I have actually two final questions. Uh, as a human that makes sounds that most humans cannot make, what <laughs> what artist is there out there that does a scream that you can't do? Uh, so the guy from Beyond Deviation, both of them, uh, Fred Nihilist, and the I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Guillaume Villeneuve. I believe he's French Canadian. They can hit this whistle scream that is absolutely absurd. They sound like tea kettles with just like <laughs> behind it. it. It's absolutely. It's like the Mariah Carey of screaming, is what you're saying. Yes, that's exactly. What it, is. it is fascinating. <laughs> Interesting. And then my for real final serious question is, uh, what's a piece of musical advice that somebody in the industry has given you that uh, was like an eye opener, made you take, you take your career a little more seriously, or a terrible mistake maybe when you first joined the band that you don't want any starting up band to make? Um, I would say just kind of as a smaller band, just dropping music without promoting it prior. Um, in, in my opinion, you know, because like, unless you're 
know, a huge band like Metallica could drop an album tomorrow and everybody would listen to it. But, you know, when it comes to releasing music as as a local band, you know, you want to have some kind of promotion maybe two weeks before you, you make a short clip show, showcasing the song. Uh, you could do run an ad on Facebook or Instagram, maybe pull in some potential fans who would be interested and it would definitely boost your listens for the um, for the release. We've definitely, and when I first joined the band, we tried doing some uh, like just sudden releases of songs, and they they just didn't do well at all. You know, it took it took a long time for them to kick off. Whereas when we've started to you know promote prior, I think we started with Corpus Christi, and then Corpus Christi just did really really well. So uh, we've kind of been following that method ever since. Damn it! I have one additional question. I'm sorry, I'm having fun, but uh, is <laughs> Do you like Christy has that that unique breakdown that is just so different from from most other deathcore artists? Did did you and Barry ever talk while working on Emits and be like, we gotta top this or or get something equally as nasty? Yeah, so I was tr- definitely trying to um, one up Corpus Christi for sure. I don't know if we were successful. That's kind of up to the listener. But um, I would say the end of Manipulation by Design and Darkness to Daylight would definitely be the two that have end breakdowns that are, if not top, close. Hell yeah. All right, I'm going to have to jam those tonight. On, on, I'm turning them up to 11 on the headphones and make sure I hear those. <laughs> Christian, you are an absolute gentleman. We appreciate you so much. Uh, amidst the Hollow and the Vanquish is is uh, it's badass from the four or five songs that I've heard. I need to dive in all of it, but uh, for real, man, you're you're awesome. We appreciate you doing this. You didn't have to, but thank you so much. And uh, have a fantastic day. We wish you much much success in 2023. And we look forward to the new single with Matt in the future. Good sir, have a fantastic day. You guys too. Thank you guys for having me, and uh, I look forward to the next talk. Diamonds to yeah, dust. Hell yeah.